We will continue looking at uh, sounds uh, which we have seen last time a uh, little bit, right? We started with the idea that sounds are basic blocks of language, right? Remember, there are there aren't infinite sounds in any language. A set of sounds in any language is limited in number. Also, all the languages share sounds. Some would share more, some would share less. Nonetheless, there are distinct patterns, distinct sounds in every language. There may be distinct sounds in every language. Okay? And then we will begin looking at uh, places of articulations and manners of articulations today again. Uh, and mo mostly we will be talking about places of articulations of consonants today and we have looked at the distinction between consonants and vowels. Right? Very, very quickly uh, what would be the most significant distinction between a consonant sound and a vowel sound? Anybody? Obstruction of air flow, obstruction of exhaling flow of air in the oral cavity. Okay. If it is obstructed at different point in different ways, uh, that is at different places of articulations and with different manners of articulations, then they become consonant sounds. However, if there are there is very little obstruction and the flow is not totally obstructed, then they are vowel sounds. Vowel sounds are fundamental to words, to the to the process of word formation uh, because we see Im empirical evidence across languages that there is no word possible without a vowel sound, okay? which tells us vowels are, vowel sounds are fundamental to language. Okay? So let us look at some of more. Uh, uh, places of articulations. We will keep coming back to this uh, picture several times. I do suggest you to take a look at this picture very carefully uh, when you are looking at it at home in your, on your machines as well. Okay? Uh, in this picture, we have seen that there are two important places to begin with. One is nasal cavity the other is oral cavity and this, this place uvula is one very crucial organ which is responsible for nasal quality of sounds in the sense that if the air, if air flow is allowed to move through this cavity, then we get nasal quality in sounds. If it is, if uvula is raised and this nasal passage is closed, then we get only oral sounds. All right? And then we come to uh, other places of articulation uh, where the important ones are going to be. Look at this. Do you see this place? Uh, this place, which is called a velum. You see this place? This is called palate. Then things like these, which are teeth, and then lips. Okay? And then right 
close next to teeth, you see what we know as alveolar ridge. Do you see this thing? Alveolar ridge here and then this is in, in the oral cavity, we have this line as we say tongue. This is the back of tongue, this will be the tip of the tongue. All right? So, I am only drawing your attention to some of these places which are going to be responsible for a large number of sounds uh, again. One, one more thing which you should look at is this. Do you see this thing? This is called glottis and vocal cords are located here. Right? Anybody, anybody plays any musical instrument? No? Yes? So, how, how do you get sound out of musical instruments? Vibration. Vibrations. Of what? So, there are, there are strings in the, uh, in some of the, or, or many of them and then when you try to vibrate them in variety of ways, then you get different combination of sounds. That is all I can say about them and that is, that is visible. You can, you can see people doing that. And then, then there is a uh, underlying system behind that. Those who know how to do it well, they, they, they can come up with more combination of, of sounds. So, look at this. There, is, there are vocal cords located here in the, in the glottis. So, these are, these are going to be important places for us to look at. Did we see vowel sounds last time? What's what is very crucial to refresh is there are only three places of articulations. That is, we have divided the entire oral cavity into, into three parts. One is back, mid and front. The, the reason why it has been divided only in three parts is because the obstruction of sound is very minimal. Okay? So, for, for the back vowel, Whatever little obstruction that you see is in the back of the oral cavity. For mid vowels, the little bit of obstruction that you, you will see is in, the, in that part. And then for front vowels like U and U, you see it being some, some sort of obstructions in the front. Uh, uh, and then, then we have, we have seen according to manners of articulations, there are two of them. One is a short vowel, the other is long. Uh, we started talking about vowels uh, when I had asked you questions about uh, uh, how many vowels are there in English and remember, we had seen there are five vowels and then we talked about them a lot and we also, we also talked that there is nothing called A for apple, remember those things? Now, besides that, now is, now is the time to look at it more carefully, where the distinction between a, a vowel sound a and a is only in terms of the duration of, duration of these sounds and that duration is also relative duration, which is if, if a is longer then a has to be shorter than that. Okay? Uh, e, if it is longer, then the short one has to be shorter than that. So, there, there is no, no uh, time defined for these short and long vowels, this duration is relative. All right? uh, and they have been very carefully classified in the classified in the studies of these sounds, short, long, short, long and short, long. Uh, all three back vowel, mid vowel and front vowels have their three longer counterparts. And then there are, there are more vowels. I, I told you last time uh, that this, this classification was done long, long time ago. That was around 2500. BC uh, by uh, a grammarian uh, Panini who studied these things. 
Um, do you, does anyone know where he lived, where he studied these things? The last time I remember somebody was telling me about Panini. Um, somebody? You? Okay. So, do you know where he, I mean this is not just for him, anybody can answer this question. Do you know where he lived, where he did these things? No. That, that's not very crucial for what we are discussing, but it's important to locate it in time and history, uh, time and place particularly. Uh, he studied it in the range of Hindu Kush mountains, which are now uh, parts of a, a northwestern Pakistan or Afghanistan. Um, the, the idea is uh, probably he studied these things at Takshashila okay? uh, or around that, that area. Another important part is in these many years, 2500 years, studies after studies of sound system and anything that we know today in modern science about sounds, such studies have not contradicted anything that he was talking about. And I think I remember now when last time we, before we stopped last time I told you that these sounds are unique sounds in the sense that they are part of all the languages, all the languages, the languages that were there during time, during Panini's time or may not be now or the languages that we have today or may not have been around during time of Panini. Two crucial examples, I, I, two crucial examples are um, Hindi and English and, and many other languages that, that we speak. Get this thing? All right. Moving ahead, uh, now we want to look at consonant sounds. In the, in the set of sounds that we are going to look at and that, that are very common in most of the languages that we speak, almost all the languages that we speak, these are five different places of articulations. So, in the, in the oral cavity you will see the location of these five places which, which we have looked, looked at and we are going to see that again. The sounds that come from velum, remember that place velum in that cavity? No, um, we, are, we are going to look at that in a moment. Such sounds are called velar sounds. Uh, Palate gives us palatal sound, uh, teeth, dental sounds, lips, labial sounds and there is something called retroflex which I will show you in a, in a moment. Uh, so let's, let's, let us look at uh, some more on manners of articulations. Let, let me first show you actual some of, some of these sounds and then this manner of articulation or places of articulations will make more sense. Okay? Do these sounds sound familiar? When we say ka, okay, let us let's talk about couple of generic things first to establish certain fundamentals and then we look at they are classifications according to places of articulations and minors of articulations. When we say ka, is this, which, which language does this sound belong to? Is, is this sound in Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, Hindi, Sanskrit, English? In a way, all the languages that you may be speaking. Okay? And uh, bear with me, I am not just counting these languages for the sake of their names or the languages that you may be speaking. I am trying to draw your attention to the fact that these sounds are not specific to a language. 
okay and similarly their the manners of articulations that you see on the vertical axis so if ka is a velar sound it is not going to change depending upon different languages this point making sense the place of articulation is not going to change depending upon different languages therefore we are talking about the process of sound production which are not specific to a language. At this point also if I can remind you about the things that we established way early in the beginning that these, these are the ways to look at fundamentals of language. Remember the distinction that we established between language and languages, right. So, when we look at these things or in, in a particular in, in these manners, then we are talking about language, we are not looking at languages, all right, okay. So, uh, it will be helpful if you can if you can say some of these sounds and really see whether these we, we do not have to locate vol, velum, but we can see if those areas in your oral cavity whether they are really true or not right you do not have to say it too loudly but you can say it you may you have you have said this sound million times by now by million I simply mean uncountable numbers probably we do not even remember how many times a day we say these sounds right but one more time does not make much of a difference and that time is going to be the time when you are really going to see that these are velar sounds that is coming from velum. So, can somebody say this sound loudly Sandeep can you say this sound loudly ka ka do we see that <coughs> this is located in this area not not exactly at this point in this area do you see that when we say ka ka do you see any any uh, involvement of lips in that teeth tongue do you see that? What is the involvement of tongue in production of ka? So, this is the part, this is the place, right? And this is the tongue back, that is back of the tongue, right? Tongue is a is is is, is long, long uh, muscular thing in the oral cavity, right? It is it, not very good looking. Uh, organ in, an, in any sense, but we know how it looks right we see that almost every day. So, and if you if we divide that also into several parts that is tip of the tongue and then you see the sides of the tongue they are called blades of the tongue and then we have back of the tongue I, I promise you we will not talk about these things any further ok. Uh, it has all, all such parts have huge role to play in production of a particular sound. So, when we say ka what happens to the tongue back? It raises little bit right and then probably it is going to be touching that velum part. In that process it blocks the flow of the air completely all right and then when the release takes place the blocking if is not responsible for the sound the raising of back of the tongue upward towards velum blocks the flow of the air when it is released the sound that we get from that part is called ka oh, and we give them a name it is called velar sound once again 
what is important for us again to keep in mind is this is we are not aware of all these things happening we are not doing anything on purpose remember just a mo moment ago i told you we don't even know how many times we say this sound we have we don't pay attention to this process that we are talking about therefore we don't know therefore we we take a moment to think what what's going on with the back of the tongue and velum and all that i i don't know so in order for us to be saying this sound ka 100 times a day 1000 times a day we really don't have to pay attention to its mechanism the the motor movement available for this sound however when we look at it in terms of what is happening then this is this is where we get it clear palatal sounds so what was the next one palatal cha cha once again for a for a, for a generic confirmation is this sound available in all the languages that you speak cha now do you when you say this sound cha do you see the difference in place of articulations between ka and cha yes and it as you can see in the picture it's moving forward right velum is toward the back of the mouth and palate is almost in the middle so much so that we can we can realize we can we can feel that right there are two parts of palate one part is called hard palate the other part is called soft palate that distinction is not made in this uh, picture but there are two parts of this that distinction is also important for several sounds may not be important for the sounds that we are talking about right now but there may be some sounds in some language which may have uh, palatal sounds which are coming from soft palate and or palatal sounds coming from hard palate if if there are sounds which are coming from both of them some sounds from hard palate and some sounds from soft palate then they are they are given different names for the sound cha we call it palatal because that distinction is not important here okay and i am talking about only i'll i'll repeat this thing again i'm talking about only five places of articulations because i am i'm trying to restrict with this description only to some sounds this is not to say that there are only five places of articulations in the oral cavity for consonantal sounds understand there could be more and and not could be there are more for other languages okay it's just that we are not talking about lot of them here i'll at the end of it i'll give you some of them some such sounds which will have different places of articulations which we are also familiar with okay just just to see all right so in the production of palatal sounds we have moved forward and uh, now velum is not responsible what is responsible is palate when we say cha right uh i'm sorry for this arrangement now the next one, we 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 leave the next one for a moment okay we go to the dental ones that dental sound is called ta ta do you hear the sound clearly ta can you say that ta right can you give me a word where you see these dental sounds a word with ta tabla tabla very nice thinking thinking is different we say thinking is different let's let's leave this for a moment ta somebody from there tabla is one no i'm coming to tennis in a moment remember this these words thinking and tennis both talaiwa okay tail tail 
what is the word for tail in Telugu or for that matter Telugu, ta, right, uh, but nobody told me what is the word for tail in Telugu, you understand tail, tail oil, okay, do you see the, do you hear the sound ta in Telugu, that is the sound we are talking about, okay. Now, what is the place of articulation for this? What is going on with this sound? Upper teeth, right? Say it again. Ta. Say it again, pay more attention to this and then tell me. What you have said so far is right. Ta. No, that's fine, that's fine. <coughs> Tip of the tongue, which part of the tongue? Tip of the tongue, right? Has something to do with teeth. What does it actually do? Touching that upper part is also kind of true, kind of fine. But it does more than that. That, that is given for all the sounds. See, this is why we have already talked about obstruction of air in the beginning. And now we are talking about a specific mechanism. It is just that you need to focus little bit more when you are saying ta. That, that is also true. It is true just like it is true for ka, just like it is true for cha. The, the, the difference is because velum is too far back our palate is centrally located. So, when the air flow is completely obstructed, we do not feel what you say pressure. Okay? And, you, and because we are allowing the flow of the air to come all the way toward the front of the mouth, therefore you feel the pressure. That is given, but, but nice observation. There is something else that is happening which is very, very clear. Nobody wants to say that? Okay. Let me say this to you and then see, then tell me whether it is true or not. The tip of the tongue goes in the middle of both upper teeth and lower teeth. When you say Telugu, tail and tabla. Does it or does it not? You, you, you can only feel this when you say this. Does it or does it not? See, it is too obvious also in the sense that it is too much in the front, right? And why you may be thinking that it does not go in the middle of the teeth is also something that I am going to show you or I am going to tell you. But first say the word Telugu the way we say or tabla or tail or many other words with ta. We are not talking about ta like table. What can you give me a couple of more words with ta? T, table, top. We are not saying these sounds. We are talking about dental sounds like tabla, telugu, tail, and more. Do you agree with this thing, or you are you are in agreement with this because I am saying so? Do you see, do you feel the tip of the tongue going in the middle of the upper teeth and lower teeth? Now it is too fast. You cannot hold it for long time. If it does not stay there for you to feel it. See, teeth is a very sharp, sharp object, right? At the same time, tip of the tongue is the softest thing. If it stays there any longer, you can understand the violence that can that can happen. You see, see, see this thing? Therefore, however, that happens every time we say that, alright? 
and it's it's observable when you say it, say these sounds in isolation. You simply say ta, ta. Only then you see it happening. When you say words fast, because it, when you say words fast, you don't see that happening obviously, because there may be more than one sound ta in a word. When we say wo say a word which may have four or five sounds in it, we do not pay attention to the places of articulation of each sounds. And a word may have a sound palatal, may have a dental, may have a wheeler, all kinds of sounds are possible in a word. Remember, remember these things that we have been discussing so far? When you put all these discussions in, in perspective, then you see more clearly the generic or fundamental aspects of language that we have discussed so far. All right? Now, the ta is a dental sound for that purpose that we are going to see the tip of the tongue in the middle of two teeth, therefore it is called dental. One more point at this stage, we have talked about three, velar sounds from velum, palatal sounds from palate and dental sounds from teeth. In all three of them, we see the role of tongue. This, do, you, do we see that? The back of the tongue ra ra is raised up to touch velum, tip of the tongue goes in the middle of the teeth for dental sounds, but these sounds are not named after tongue. That, that has a role tongue has a role to play in most of them, but they are named after different places of articulations in the oral cavity. All right? okay. Now, the last one is labial and the, the pressure that you mentioned, you are going to see that in these sounds more when you say pa. When we, we are exaggerating some of the things little bit because we do not say the way I am saying it right now, when we say the same sound in a word, right. How do we say, say pa, pa, what is going on here? It is labial sound, what is going on here? Lips, what is happening to lips? So the, so the flow of the air is stopped and released at lips, right? It is very clear. To be a little bit more precise, in the, okay, let me say that in the following sense, I have to look at a couple of other things for you. In the more precise way, do you see the role of both the lips or just one lip? That is upper lip and lower lip, both are involved in that, right? Pa. Can we say the sound pa just with one lip? No. It is just not possible. Okay? Therefore, more precisely, these sounds are called bilabial sounds. I have just put labial here for a particular reason, but these sounds are called bilabial sounds, just to be really precise. Does this at least make you help the genius of a person who may have done this thing long time ago, right? It, it, even now, it gives us a sense that we, we know these things so well. We know all these sounds so well. We do not even need to pay attention to these things. How many times do we say these things in a day, right? But when these things are brought to our attention, particularly with the idea that somebody paid attention to these things, not when uh, French Revolution was going on or Indian Freedom Revolution was going on, long, long time ago, right? That that is something something really uh, very striking, at least, right? So the and and one more thing which we should which we should keep in mind and 
this genius of Panini helps us know at least is human effort to pay attention to intricacies of language, even at the level of sounds, words, sentences or mechanism involved in production of sounds is not new. It is not done only for computers, it is not done for helping other things. It was done simply as an intellectual pursuit for someone's curiosity to understand what is involved in when we speak, what happens when we speak. This is one question which does not strike us even now too commonly. I, I, I am not saying that people do not pay attention to these things, too commonly, right. There are, there are lot of other things that are happening to us and we do not pay attention to them too commonly. So, I am not saying that sounds are or language is the only thing which everybody should be paying attention to, right. There are many other things that are happening to us or we keep doing which to which we do not pay much attention, but language happens to be one of them. I have taken you to through various other discussions uh, about various other aspects and this is again one more. Uh, talking about Panini is not just to talk about a, a great Sanskrit grammarian who did it long time ago. Important thing is so long time ago to such, such minute details that it is not just labial, it is bilabial. And they, they have given the terms for these, these sounds which help us see the precision to which they have worked on without any instrument, without any laboratory or I, I mean it is easy for us to say from now that probably they did not even know the concept of laboratory at that time. But lot of times it feels like that will be too much of a claim, maybe they did Maybe they were talking about other things that we do in laboratory, we just do not have evidence of such things anymore, right. So, that, that's, that is what these precise description tells us about that time. Now, coming back to see more of what this system has done and why this system is called generative system and then what it how it is applicable, how such things are applicable to production of others, other kinds of sounds. But before we go there, let us now look at what we know as manners of articulations. Please look at this chart carefully, I do not have grids here. The sounds that you see this far, these are called oral sounds. These sounds are nasal sounds. I will draw your attention to that also in a couple of minutes. Okay. And uh, on the vertical axis, we have different places of articulations, all right. And here you see, do you see some something plus minus things? These are called manners of articulations. They are, they are simple things, I am going to just uh, tell you in a moment, uh, uh, all right. So, first. All these sounds here that you see on this horizontal axis, they are all velum, all of them are coming from velum, they are all velar sounds, all right. And what are they when we say, what is the next one when after ka? Ka. And after that? And after that? All right, let us just stop there. Even this much was great. Right? We, we just saw that this, this, this gives us a good feeling to understand, oh, this sound ka has a place of articulation which is called velum, right? Even this much is great, looks, looks fine. But look at the further details of this. What is the difference between ka and kha? If this is a very simple question that anyone can, can ask you, right? More air. See this thing? More air. You may have seen this chart many times. Has, has, 
as people here study Devanagari chart, chart, you may have seen this chart. What I am trying to show you is what you have not seen so far. What is, what is shown to us, what is done to us in schools, what is done to us in schools with English alphabet, I have already told you. Right? What is done to us with this kind of chart is we are given this thing and we are not given these things. That is okay. I mean, we do not we don't have to blame people. Right now, what I am doing is we are telling you what we are not t told ever. We are looking at something that is not visible, that is not clearly told to us. So, what is the difference between ka and ka? Again, more air. Can we say it little bit more precisely? When you say more air, Please pay attention to this. We are not denying that there is no air flow in ka. It is only more air. And that more is kind of visible, right? And it is very, very simple. If you put your hand close to this, close to your mouth, and say the two sounds, you will, you will feel more flow of air in the second one. Ka, ka. You see that? Can, can you can you do this? That please. The more it depends on how much more you release, but there is more between the two. Okay. This is why, and and this is referred in modern terms. The terminology that I have used is aspiration. Okay, aspiration. So, ka is indicated as minus aspiration and kha is indicated as plus aspiration. All right? So, that at least gives us one way of distinction between these two. If we are looking at only flow of air, right? Now, look at ga. Ga. So, when we say ka and ga, there is no flow both of them have similar flow of air, but still there is a difference between the two. When we say ka and ga, there is a difference between the two. Is there a difference or not? Ka and ga. Now, if we only put aspiration in picture, then it fails to account for the distinction between ka and ga. The flow of air, more flow of air, which we know as aspiration, accounts for the difference between ka and kha very nicely. But again, when we want to look at the difference between ka and ga, we see no difference in terms of flow of air. Therefore, that parameter fails. Okay? However, what we observe empirically is there is a difference between the two. So, we need to account for whatever is responsible for that difference, we need to articulate that. Right? Again, when we say gha, then we see the difference. Right? But what we see is the difference between ka and kha and ga and gha. Again, we do not see the difference between ka and ga in terms of flow of air. And we have similar kind of flow of air for ga and kha, but still there is a difference between the two. Am I, am I making sense to everybody? So, just flow of air that is aspiration is not telling us much. So, there has to be something more, which, is res, which should be responsible for the difference in these two sounds. Now, let us go back to vocal cord, what we, what we saw in the picture and remember where it is located? It is located in glottis, right? So, what is after, after aspiration that you see in this chart? It is called voice, right? Voice is the term for vibration in the vocal cord. Okay? If there is no vibration, then that is minus voice and if there is vibration, then that is called plus voice. Now, this vibration 
is is very minimal it's hard to distinguish but that is the voicing which that is the that is the vibration which is responsible for the distinction between ka and and ga however hard that may be it's possible where where is where do you think will be glottis located glottis located somewhere here so if you put your this thing uh, here and say the two sounds ka and ga ka and ga ka ga the it's not as nice as it comes out of musical instruments but you do see more vibration when you say ga okay and that's the voicing which makes the difference between ka and ga and also between kha and gha so ka becomes a sound which has no vibration no air kha is a sound which has only more air but no vibration ga is a sound which has no air but vibration and gha is a sound which has both more air and vibration get this thing now if we put this binary distinction of more air and voicing in picture then we can assign distinctive features to each one of these sounds even though the place of articulation is same for all of them so in that case we can say velar plus voice plus aspiration and then we know which sound we are talking about we have to say nothing of what we have discussed so far or to put it differently we only need to say that much and that accounts for everything that we have done so far okay so so this whole thing the distinction binary distinctions which we call manners of articulations because it's about more air less air more vibration less vibration these are termed as manners of articulations and different locations in the oral cavity are called places of articulations this may not have been told to us for a reason but when you look at these sounds then you see why are they arranged the way they are arranged okay now since we are looking at this chart i i should also draw your attention to one more thing which one of the these five places of articulations that you have seen so far is more audible which sounds that we discussed few few days ago that children can see more visibly which of these places of articulations is easy to see lips right they are quite in the front it's observable right still when we see the chart and this classification what we see is they are starting at the place which is not visible right what would be wrong if they started this whole chart with labial sounds first in other words my question is can you see the underlying precision unstated fact that this wants this chart wants to tell you without writing or without saying that so that's fine that, that's absolutely true so in labial the that place is lips and in velum that velar that place is velum but why that that is fine true what i am asking is and please look at this question carefully what i am asking is why this arrangement does not start with labial because labial sounds is very easy to see remember 
even kids start watching movements of lips therefore they end up saying words like papa mama baba right they see the movement of lips they are not really imitating they are only trying to move their own lips as well and they they end up saying these things which we think they are saying papa the child may not know anything about papa what it means or what the word actually means now you see why that might be happening but my question is more fundamental before we stop why not starting with labials first and then velum because labials are more visible and if at anything that is true about velars velum velum is not visible at all so what the person who did this arrangement what is the rational behind that is there no rational or is there is some rational which is not stated but it's for us to see They start at the back of. And then they gradually move out. Very true. From, uh, throat, then palate, then up to final lips. Absolutely true. But why is lips at the end and not at the first? Because the, we, it has an answer in what you said. Because we have distinguished between nasal sounds and uh, oral sounds. Not, not true, but not the answer. Did you learn from sound or not sight? No. That's also true, but not the answer to this question. The simple answer is. it's not mentioned categorically here but remember what is responsible for production of sounds which air inhaling air or exhaling air exhaling air starts modification where glottis and upward without writing this arrangement tells you that please know that while arranging this this thing in this particular way i know that inhaling air is not responsible for this thing so i am giving you the direction in which the flow of air is responsible for production of sounds you see this thing if we did if someone did this today there is there is no nobel prize for linguistics okay if someone did this thing today and talked about all these things i am not sure about nobel prize but this must have got them something but this person did not even write the things they knew about it trust me this arrangement could not have been possible without the person knowing about these things see see the point that i am trying to make so it's not a coincidence that he starts with velum and goes to labial he is moving gradually from velum to palate to dental and others to lips so he could have gone all all the way backward but not going backward simply tells you that i am talking about the directionality of sounds directionality of flow of air which is responsible for production of sound get this thing there are there are few more things salient features of these sounds and little bit more about manners of articulation that we need to discuss which we discuss tomorrow when we meet at 1 thank you <laughs>